This is my dark fantasy auto battler, Alchemortis, and this is the new overworld map. It's 10 times bigger than before, with over 300 nodes, 3 regions, and a lot of effort to make it all work. Here's how I used algorithms like Delaunay triangulation and wave function collapse to bring it all together. If you're new to the game, let me give you a quick rundown. In Alchemortis, you play as a necromancer who uses forbidden alchemy to create powerful synergies. You move around the map collecting cards, enchanting, upgrading, and fighting until you're strong enough to take on the bosses. With the alchemy system, you combine the properties of multiple cards into a single card, potentially creating something obscenely overpowered. The goal is to collect as much power as possible before the Inquisition catches on to you. If you're caught unprepared, it may be game over. The newest playtest build for Alchemortis is live right now for Patreon members, but I'll talk more about that later in the video. In the previous build, the map was relatively small, only about 30 nodes in total, which felt unsatisfying, so I made the map 10 times bigger. Now the map contains roughly 350 nodes, divided into three distinct regions. Each region has a different flavor of enemy faction. The first features mostly peasants, the second soldiers, and the third higher cultural figures like bishops and even angels. Getting that many nodes on the map presented several challenges. I had to generate the node types, connect them with sensible edges, and place all of the decorative elements, all while keeping the load time low. Another major challenge was balancing player progression. I needed to reward players for moving into later regions, but also prevent them from gaining so much power that the game became trivial. First, let's talk about the technical details of map generation. How do you get 350 interconnected nodes with non-overlapping edges in a way that still presents interesting choices to the player? Three algorithms handle this. Poisson disk sampling, I think I said that right, Delaunay triangulation, and wave function collapse. To start, Poisson Disk Sampling lets me fill a bounding box with points that are densely packed but still somewhat random. In Alchemortis, I generate around 300 points within a specified area using this algorithm, and those points become my nodes. To connect them with edges, or roads as they appear in-game, Delaunay Triangulation is ideal. It connects all supplied nodes so that each one links to its neighbors without any intersecting edges. However, for gameplay purposes, I don't want every node connected to all of its neighbors. I want more interesting decisions than that. To handle this, I generate a minimum spanning tree, which is a network of edges that ensures every node is reachable while using as few connections as possible. This step is critical for preventing isolated nodes that can't be visited. Once that's in place, I can take edges from the Delaunay triangulation and add some of them back at random to increase navigability. Since these Delaunay edges never intersect, I can safely add them without creating visual clutter. This approach creates multiple pathways to many nodes while keeping some sections of the map more restrictive. It's surprisingly elegant once you see it in action. Getting the map connected is one thing, but determining which node types go where is another. This is where Wave Function Collapse comes in. Despite its intimidating name, it's a simple rule-based system. Each node starts with a list of possible node types, and when one type is chosen, it affects what can appear nearby. By always resolving the nodes with the fewest remaining options first, I can enforce placement rules while keeping the layout feeling organic and random. For example, shops can't be placed within four jumps of each other, and only booster and enchantment nodes can sit next to the starting node. The rules can be as simple or as complex as I need, giving me a lot of control over how the map is generated. This is how I keep the player's ability to gain power in check. I want to support certain runs where the player gathers power fast, but I don't want it to be guaranteed. The player should, for the most part, have to make careful decisions about which nodes to visit. Now let's talk about visuals. Every decoration you see on the screen here is an individual tile placed on a tile map. Placing them is a multi-step process that starts with this decoration placement definition. This is a custom resource that defines the noise values and the tile indices used for decoration placement. It also includes a step value, which controls how densely packed the decorations are. The system steps through each region's bounding box, sampling noise values at each step. If the noise value falls within the defined range, a tile is placed at the nearest tile map cell. This process produces organic looking landscapes and supports all kinds of decorations, like this windmill, which is actually a separate scene. The end result is a map that's fun to navigate, visually distinct, and rich with regional variety. Expanding the map size solved one of the biggest issues from the first playtest of Alchemortis. Players felt the map was too small and didn't give them enough time to appreciate their progression. 
Of course, there's all kinds of new stuff beyond map generation that's included in this playtest build, such as an overhauled alchemy system, two new enemy bosses, and dozens of new cards. But you'll have to join the playtest to see those for yourself. If you'd like to try this playtest build now, you can subscribe to my Patreon. Any tier will grant you instant access to the playtest, but the sponsor tier has other nice perks. For example, if you subscribe as a sponsor for at least one month, you will have a Steam key for Alchemortis sent to you when the game releases. Your name will also be listed in the in-game credits at launch. Alternatively, the playtest build will be open to the public starting Friday, November 7th. Be sure to join the Discord so you'll be notified when it goes live. You'll be able to join the public Alchemortis playtest from the Steam page, and while you're there, consider wishlisting the game, that would help me out a lot. If you play the playtest, be sure to send your feedback in the Discord server. I can't wait to hear what you think of the new map and all of the other new changes. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching this video. If you want to support my work, please consider wishlisting Alchemortis on Steam, subscribing to my Patreon, joining the Discord server, or purchasing one of my courses. You can also sign up for my email list at firebelly.com. The links for everything are in the description below.